Yeah, so I, I, you can see uh, my profile here. I literally grew up in my current bank <laughs> for 23 years. I chose to actually continue with my career here because I find that it's fulfilling enough for me. Uh, I, I do continue to learn even after 23 years. So that's why I thought that it will be good to share in terms of what that is, in terms of working in a bank. And I'm really glad to have, you know, two of my wonderful colleagues uh, and teammates that are with me today. Uh, they are obviously younger than me, so I thought it would be great <laughs> in terms of connecting with the youth. I know the audience here are mostly probably youth that is, uh, you know, will be looking at, you know, what career to go for. And I know there are so many careers out there, and sometimes it's very difficult to understand, you know, what is it? To be working for a bank and I hope today uh, really our sharing is very high level in terms of what it is and uh, also take this into chance to, to share also our career uh, in terms of life as well so hopefully you'll find it useful um, we have you know really try to keep it short and concise and the key thing is that you know feel free to ask us questions for the Q&A, okay? All right, so for a start, I, I, I did uh, uh, graduate in terms of having a Bachelor of Accountancy with NTU. So I did start with uh, Five for the House because PWC in auditing. So really my background is on finance. But when I was studying, I actually I had I was science all throughout until university. Um, and uh, I find that, you know, Finance seems to be, you know, what that interests me, and uh, and from from um, when I was in auditing, actually I audited all industries. That means there are companies, whether they are manufacturing, whether they're consuming consumer retail technology clients, local companies, multinationals, but I'm also part of the specialization group for banking and finance. So I was very happy that I had the chance to be in that group. And because of that, it opened up the opportunity. So um, I'm very thankful that you know, when I was actually at my first kid, uh, you know, if during my maternity leave, uh, a, a bank actually approached me. And that's how I crossed over from auditing into a bank. And at first, when I first crossed over, I was actually more in internal audit and compliance. And because of my experience in, in the bank that I managed to also connect with corporate banking, who very kindly in terms of, you know, offering me a role there. And that's because of the new experience that uh, I was involved that includes corporate banking. And with that, you know, um, very interestingly, uh, that that opportunity just opened up to me. So I would say I'm I'm really grateful, and uh, I'm saying that also because sometimes we try to plan our life so much, right? But uh, you'll be surprised that you know, even though when we weren't really planning for it, you know, certain opportunities may come by, and the key thing is really focus on doing what is the best in my current role and because you know by focusing on that that open opportunity out to other roles as well okay and uh, uh also you know being in, in the bank it can be very meaningful and uh, we will share a bit more how we interact with corporate but at the same time uh it it also enabled me to do a lot of volunteering because it is the culture in my bank. So uh, happy to say that I also co-chair our Singapore Philanthropy Committee and also part of the Expo for the uh, community volunteering. And in fact, it's because of this uh, that, you know, we, we are strong supporter of Brown Centre. In fact, uh, uh, we are a corporate sponsor for Brown Centre as well. So, so, you know, really glad to be able to have this opportunity and also be involved and, and sponsored the youth program for mindfulness, okay? And uh, as you can see, even for banks, 
we do really uh, look at uh, global diversity and inclusion uh, and volunteering. So I'm very happy to win the award. So this is, I know, um, just an uh, introduction about my career uh, journey. And I'm going to pass over to Desiree. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much, Chris. And hi, everyone. Thank you for taking time this afternoon to have us today. Uh, my name is Desiree. So I'm essentially within the same team as Priscilla. Uh, I have been with the bank for seven years now, and it is really my first job upon graduation. I did an internship um, in the same uh, corporate banking role in the same bank as well in 2014. So I, given that I've been in the bank from like a junior, uh, starting from an intern all the way to where I am today, I'm actually going to have a separate section later where I do share with you a bit more of like internship, how I, how I picked this role and career journey and how I started off. So I will not address it here. Uh, I, am, I graduated from Singapore Management University uh, with a double degree in economics and accountancy. So very much probably when I was your age, I was in the same situation. I think some of you might be thinking what's a good career to be in, we're a bit confused as to what are different, different uh, roles. There's a lot of terminologies, particularly in banking. I think different banks also use different terminologies, so it gets a bit confusing, I can imagine. So hopefully today, uh, through this um, hour, hour and a half session, we will give you a bit more insights, um, a bit broader on what banking entails, but specifically in the roles with which we are in corporate banking and credit risk management, Alvin. Yeah, um, hobbies, just out of work. Uh, I do have a family. I have two young kids. So um, outside of work, I think a lot of time is spent uh, on them, a lot of attention on them. So me and my husband, we love to eat. So we're always looking out for new food places and uh, places to visit with the kids. Yeah, so that's it from me. I'll hand it over to Alvin. Uh, thank you, Desiree. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for having us here. Uh, I'm Alvin Agustin. Uh, I'm, I'm a senior credit officer in, and we manage uh, MNC uh, business for the bank across Southeast Asia and Australia. I manage a team of six people. Uh, so how did I start my career in banking? Uh, so basically, uh, I did my uh, BCom in, uh, so basically bachelor's in commerce in accounting. And then I went on to do master's in finance. Uh, so I did MBA in finance specialization. And I always had this interest about numbers, uh, accounts, account statements, accounting, and other things. And I, I happened to do my internship in one of our Indian bank uh, in the same credit department. And it fascinated me a lot, uh, understanding how cash is moving from this place to one other place, how business are making profit, understanding of different industries. Uh, so it was very exciting. Uh, so after my MBA, I got placed in one of, uh, one of the third largest uh, bank in India. And then I happened to move to uh, Bank of uh, in the, my current bank in uh, in uh, Bombay, India. And then, uh, given our bank uh, is is uh, is highly uh, supports mobility, so I got an opportunity to move from uh, India to Singapore. And my current experience with the bank is around eleven years. Uh, so, so it has been a great experience. Uh, it has been a, a great learning experience. Uh, it's, it has been a great growth experience for me. Uh, I have started from an analyst, now I manage a team of six people and I cover uh, around regions like Southeast Asia and, and Australia. Uh, so outside of work, I love to play badminton. Uh, so at least once or twice a week, I play badminton. Uh, I even represented the bank uh, for corporate community games, uh, which was a very great experience where around 40 or 45 different companies across Singapore will come and compete. So that was a great experience. So, so that's about me. And again, thanks for having me. All right, thank you. So let's, let's talk about what is banking. So when we talk about a career in banking, actually there are many, many roles within banking. So, you know, within banking, there are so many segments itself. So, you know, for, for the three of us, we are part of the corporate you know, and investment banking and credit risk management uh, side. So it's more for large corporates. So, uh, you know, within that, there are a lot of departments within this segment. But, you know, 
on the day today, you know, you see your local banks there, uh, your DBS, you know, city banks and so all this. We have retail banking, right? Um, retail banking is really focusing on the people like you and me, which means uh, the consumers, individual itself. Okay. There's also another segment that is uh, really on uh, private wealth and also, you know, asset manager itself, how manage the assets uh, in the bank, how they invest, etc. Uh, there's commercial banking as well. So maybe the mid size type of uh, company and do treasury payments, uh, real estate. So actually banking, when a, when a person says that, you know, he works with a bank, but actually which role is he playing? It's actually very, very big. And, and I think uh, sometimes there could be mobility as we call it, mobility that even, you know, changing role from one to another within the bank as well. Uh, because usually a lot of banks, you know, the, the, the number of uh, staff, you know, have is, is ranges in the thousands. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, I'm going to move to the next slide. Uh, so today we're just going to talk about our segment. Our segment itself, uh, Death and I are in corporate banking. So, you know, even in under the corporate investment banking, it is there are so many departments within that. We have the part of the front office, a middle office, and the back office. Okay, um, and within the front office itself, you have the private side. What does it mean? It means that we are the ones really um, talking to customers. So for us, we talk to really large uh, companies uh, that sometimes you very often in the news, these are the companies that we actually uh, face. So they're private side because companies may tell us things about the company which are not published, right? In the news, they can't go it. So that's why we are on the private side. And uh, you know, banking, uh, secrecy is a very big thing, which means that we keep, you know, what our clients tell us confidential. So that's very important part uh, as a banker, all right? If, if uh, a person who cannot keep secret cannot be a banker, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so on the public side, uh, there are other things like, you know, research. Right, so people in like in the economic side, uh, uh, they, they like uh, looking at you know what individual companies are doing. You see sometimes they, those you can Google. Those are based on public information on how the companies are doing, right? Um, and uh, so that could be a research on individual companies. It can be research on country economic or currency. You know the foreign exchange. You know. Uh, how the US dollars is against Singapore dollars, you know, that kind of equity and also currency research. Okay. And uh, the middle office, which is what Elvin is in, is on credit risk management. And he's going to talk a bit more, so I will steal his thunder. It's a very important part of the business so that we ensure that the bank is doing the right thing and able to sustain in terms of many, many years. Okay, um, and we also have people who are client servicing and also implement because Death and I, you know, as we own the client, we sell solutions, we help our clients solve problems, right? So we come up with solutions that someone has to implement. So we have people specializing in that as well. And the back office is what has operation, technology, and you'll be surprised. You know, technology is one of our biggest departments. So sometimes, you know, people say that, you know, we are like a technology company with a banking license, okay? So there's finance, internal audit, taxation, human resource. And you'll be surprised, my bank actually, uh, uh, you know, has owned so many patents. Uh, we're talking about, you know, a few thousand patents. That's not in the technology space. So, and then even partnership with FinTech, etc. So, so this is something that maybe a lot of people do not realize that. So there could be people not in, not studying finance at all. There are people who are like engineers and that join banking, 
okay? Uh, people who focus on really uh, computer technology information system to join the bank as well. So there are many, you know, wide aspects of what banking is. Okay. Yes, next slide. I'm going to hand over to Elvin. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Uh, okay, for credit risk management, uh, before I start what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and rules and responsibilities, uh, I'd like to give you a quick overview on what is credit risk management uh, so that you have a better understanding of what exactly we do. So, so what is credit? Credit is the ability for a client to borrow money with the intention to repay. So credit can be split into two different aspects. There's retail credit as well as corporate credits. Uh, me, Pris, and Desiree are part of corporate credit, but uh, I've also included retail credit here so that I think uh, it's it's closer to you because we all are individuals and we take retail loans. So I think it will be applicable for you for you to, for you to have a better understanding. So a retail credit will be kind of like purchase of house, you want to buy a car, or you want to, uh, money for renovation, or you want a, uh, a loan for college fees, or it, it can be even for a personal loan for your own personal needs. Uh, so those comes under retail credit, whereas corporate credits are, these are big companies where they need money on a day-to-day -day running uh, of the business. So that's called the working capital uh, loan. And then there can be uh, acquisition of other business, uh, expansions, and there can be uh, leasing of equipments and vehicles. So if I were to give you an example of uh, uh, working capital, so if I were to give you an example, so say a, a company which is manufacturing tires, so for them, uh, working capital will be basically buying off rubber, uh, processing that into a tire and selling it to the customers. The entire process is called the working capital cycle. So basically if a company needs money, so first step is basically they need money for buying rubber. So that can be one of the loans. Another example of expansion or purchasing business or equipment would be, for example, everyone knows Tesla and how fast they're expanding. So they're thinking of uh, expanding or uh, building a gigafactory in Berlin for which they will need money and a long term money. So that's where expansion or, or uh, building and machinery uh, loan comes in. Then acquisition of business. Uh, Sometime back, few years back, you would have heard Facebook acquired uh, WhatsApp. So it was a big acquisition. So companies may not have money uh, to fund the acquisition from their own pockets. So they may come to the bank to come to get some loan so that they can they can do the acquisition. When it comes to leasing uh, vessels, uh, so one of the best examples I can think of is aircraft. So say Singapore Airlines, when they want new flights or aircraft, these ex aircrafts are really expensive. So they can't just make down payments for, for the entire fleets of aircraft. So they'll go to Boeing and they can they can have a facility and they can lease all the flights uh, from Boeing uh, so that they can they can run their day-to-day uh, -day operations as well as for expansion purposes. So when when we give a loan or a credit to a customer, so it comes with a risk. So basically, credit risk is inability of the borrower or the client who we have given the loan or credit. He is not able to uh, meet the obligation or he's not able to repay. So that's the credit risk. Uh, when it comes to credit risk management is the entire system or the process which is put in place uh, from uh, doing the basic analysis. So before any credit is given to any individual or corporates, there is some level of due diligence done to understand uh, how how well is the corporate doing, whether he will be able to repay the loan or not. And, and credit risk management does not only end at the starting point when we give the loan, but it's an ongoing process. Uh, so basically once you give the loan, uh, there will be quarterly, half yearly, yearly monitoring of, of the financial statements of the, of the client and health of the company. Okay, uh, Desiree, next slide. Okay, so <clears throat> why is credit risk management important? So I'll start with a quote from uh, Oliver Kahn. He was a goalkeeper of a German national team. Uh, he once said that when a striker makes a mistake, the team may not win the game. Uh, but when a goalkeeper misses a goal, the team will lose. So that's where credit risk management is so important. So for example, if you give a loan of $5 million, uh, uh, sorry, $5 million to a client uh, with the intention of, uh, of getting uh, 100K in return, I think that's, that's a good outcome. But then if that client defaults, so bank loses $5 million. To make that loss good, we have to cater to 50 other clients with the same amount of interest or earnings from those clients. So that's where uh, credit risk is so important because if you make one small mistake, it can cost the bank uh, severely. 
So there's only one definition of a good loan, a loan which is repaid in a timely fashion. So that's where credit management uh, is involved. So we do the analysis. We make sure that uh, the bank takes a well-balanced risk and reward equation uh, so that uh, the bank is profitable and, and, and we contribute to the growth of the bank. Okay, so there are five core pillars of credit. Uh, so starting from character, character basically means the willingness to pay, repay the loan. Uh, capacity is basically whether the company or the individual earns enough money to repay the lo loans or repay the monthly installments of the loan. Uh, capital basically means your reserves, uh, which is basically can be your money in your savings account, money in your liquid assets, which in, in terms of needs, uh, you can quickly convert that into cash and repay the bank on a, on a timely basis. Uh, collateral, collateral is basically the property which is pledged to take the loan. Uh, and coming to condition, basically it, it refers to external and internal uh, factors which impacts the ability uh, of the client to repay the loan back. It can be uh, economic or government regulations which may, may impact the lending policy. Or, or in case of recession, uh, so if there's economic downturn, the recession, so that, that can in, in have a big impact on individuals may lose their job or corporate may not make enough money to repay their loans. So if I have to give you an example I'll, uh, for these four pillars, I'll give you an example of both uh, retail as well as corporate. Uh, so in terms of character, uh, so say a person wants a housing loan, the willingness to pay will be uh, determined by the credit score of the client. Uh, at the same time, uh, when he takes a housing loan, the uh, willingness to repay is high because uh, because if they don't repay the loan, the bank will seize the house. When it comes to capacity, any loan which is given to this individual for a housing loan, uh, we will see how much he earns on a monthly basis to, to see whether they can serve the principal interest on a, on a monthly basis. Capital, basically, in my example, will be, uh, so say, uh, for whatever reason, if the individual loses his job, whether he has enough savings for the next six to 12 months to repay the loan on a timely fashion. Uh, collateral in the case of uh, home loans will be the house itself. Okay, uh, and uh, external condition will be in the case of a recession, there may be chances of people losing their jobs. That's one of the risks. Uh, or uh, in, case, in case of high inflation, which is the current scenario in the market where the interest rates are really going high. So when the interest rate goes high, the, the amount of EMIs or monthly installments to be paid to the bank will also increase. So that also needs to be considered while, while giving a loan to the client. So when I move to a corporate example, uh, when it comes to character for a corporate, it's very important because for a company, uh, say for example, Apple or Samsung or Tesla, any of the companies, for them, uh, their, their character or their brand value is the strongest thing for them. So if any of these companies don't repay the loan on a timely fashion, uh, that will have a big impact on the brand. So, and, and, from a character perspective, these are big companies. Historically, you will have some sense of how the client has been borrowing money and repaying on a timely basis. So, so it's it's quite easy to uh, understand the character mm -hmm. of the company. When it comes to capacity, we look at the financial statements, the income statement, how much sales they are doing, how much is the expenses, and how much is the profitability. Based on the profitability, we we understand that okay, the client can pay X, Y, Z amount of money back when whenever they take a loan. Capital would be uh, basically the equity of the company itself or the profits which, have, which the company has made over the years. So that's basically capital. Collateral, uh, if, if the company is taking a long-term loan for building, uh, say my example, uh, Tesla for building Gigafactory, the factory itself can be a form of collateral. Uh, external condition, again, if there's a recession, uh, that will impact people's ability to buy the products from the company and that will impact uh, the bottom line of the of the of the company itself. Uh, so, uh, so that's how this five core pillars of credit is so important when we do analysis before we extend any credit to the companies. Okay, how does credit approval work? So it starts with client reaching out to us uh, with their request. Uh, so they will have an interaction with the bankers or the traders uh, and bankers will understand their requirements and then the bankers will closely work with the credit team uh, to let us know what the client is looking for. Uh, the credit team will, uh, will get down to do the due diligence, underwriting or analysis of the client to see whether we can cater to the request of the client. And then we will engage our risk partners. Uh, so so in, in our current bank, uh, credit and risk are two different departments. 
So uh, once credit approves the request, it goes to the risk department and then risk approves the limit. And based on that, uh, the limits have been approved for the client. So the request of the client will be fulfilled once the entire bank uh, credit risk department approves the loan. And then comes into do documentation, which I'll speak about it later on. Okay, so role of a credit officer or analyst is basically first, uh, once the uh, opportunity is identified, see whether we can support the request or not. Uh, then comes the spreading of the financial statement. So every company will have their own balance sheet, income statement, and cash flows. So uh, as, as a bank, we have the own system where we can put these numbers and, and the system will, uh, will give us ratios, formulas to do the deep analysis on the company. Then we sit down to prepare uh, the credit uh, risk analysis of the company. Uh, based on the risk appetite, based, based on business strategy, uh, and based on the industry they work in. Uh, and once we are comfortable, uh, that credit will be approved. Uh, and then there's, uh, <clears throat> that once the credit is approved, as I said, there's documentation. So uh, like when, when we take a housing loan or a car loan, then the bank will give you a set of terms and conditions, which will say what needs to be done, what is allowed, what is not allowed, what is it, terms and condition of the amount, how long is the amount and all that. So similarly, our credit uh, documentation will have the same amount of details about the facilities, about the credit terms and conditions, regulatory terms and conditions, etc. So, and this goes to the client, uh, we deal with big MNC clients, so uh, they may not accept the documentation as, as we have sent them, so they will negotiate. So we'll get into negotiation, we'll then work with our uh, different departments with operations, taxation team, legal team, uh, our business team to see what of the of the clauses which the client has given us can be accommodated. And once we finalize the documentation, uh, the documents get signed and then client is ready to take the loan. Uh, after this, uh, as I previously said, uh, these are not one-time analysis done. We give loan to corporates on a long-term basis. It may be uh, five years, 10 years, sometimes 15, 20 years or longer. So there's a continuous process of evaluating the company, whether the health of the company is still uh, within the ex ex uh, expectable range or not. Uh, if the company is performing well, we find we try to find uh, better opportunities uh, while working with the business and the client to see what else we can fund uh, the client. And if the financial performance is not as expected, then, then we need to discuss and see how we can reduce the risk for the bank and by cutting down loans and other things. Uh, apart from that, uh, so there is one risk management which is within the bank on top of that there is audit function which happens so we get audited by uh, internal councils external councils as well as regulatory uh, regulators uh, in each of the countries that we manage so whenever they come with the audit they will ask questions then we have to respond to the questions to ensure that everything is is uh, in in done in accordance with the policies of the bank and we are not taking additional add of risk which makes the bank uh, more riskier. Uh, so there will be audits for which we will need to work uh, with the auditors and, and help them answer the queries. So, so it starts with an analyst and then you move on to uh, a senior analyst, then a credit officer, then senior credit officer. So when, as an analyst, when, when people join, so the expectation is now that they will do in-depth of everything. They will be mostly supporting the credit officers uh, in getting these works done. And and credit officer will be guiding them on the way uh, while while performing analysis of the company. Okay, skills of a credit officer or analyst. Uh, so soft skills. Uh, I'll not go into detail because uh, uh, Desiree will be covering that in detail. Uh, but then nowadays uh, these skills uh, like um, verbal and uh, written communication, team player are very very common for most of the jobs. But when it comes to credit officer, we, we need to have some hard skill, which is basically understanding the financial statements. Uh, and when I say uh, financial statement is basically well, split into th three different segments, which is balance sheet, uh, income statement, and cash flows. Basically, balance sheet means uh, what the company owns uh, and what the company owns or owes. So basically, assets and liability. So uh, if I would go back and give you an example of uh, of a housing loan again. So when you take a housing loan. The house is the asset, whereas the loan on the house is the liability. So similarly, a company may have their own assets, 
which is plant machinery, building, inventory, etc. And they will have their own li liabilities like payables, loans to banks, etc. Uh, income statement basically it, it lists down the uh, the revenue what the company has made, uh, what are the expenses the company has, and the net profitability of the company. Cash flow basically means where the money is coming from and where the money is going. So that that's the uh, main thing which which is quite important for a credit officer to understand. Uh, in fact, uh, when it comes to business as well as uh, credit, it is is quite similar. So uh, for, for a business side, I think uh, the relationship is more important. The communication is more important. Uh, they still need to have an uh, understanding of analysis. When it comes to credit, we need to have a stronger form of analysis, uh, for, uh, stronger form of understanding of, of the balance sheet and, and the economy or, or the industry. Okay. Uh, so day in a life of credit office analyst, it's similar to what the roles are. So basically when we receive the client's request, we start understanding what the request is, whether we can meet the request or not. Then we can, we'll try to structure the credit in the way the client wants it. Uh, then we will do analysis and review uh, to meet the requirements. Uh, then once the analysis is done, we get the required approvals and we'll get the uh, credit paper reviewed. Uh, then comes uh, funding and, and closing and funding, and then ongoing process continues of monitoring uh, on an ongoing basis. And, and this cycle goes on and on because, uh, as I said, we don't serve a client for one time. We serve the client for years and years. So that, that's all about uh, credit uh, risk management and, and the role of a credit office analyst. And then I'd, I'd like to hand over to Desiree to speak about the corporate banking uh, Okay. Yeah, so, so in terms of an overview of corporate banking, so corporate banking itself, um, really as a corporate banker, uh, we own the client relationship. So, which means that we are, the, we are the first person that the client should be really thinking about when they want to do something with the bank. Okay, so we speak to uh, mostly the people on the finance side. Uh, it could be the treasurer, it could be the CFO, uh, or you know, it could be CEO as well. If we're talking about the non merger acquisition, okay. So really owning the relationship, meaning that you know, it's also understanding uh, what is the client facing, what challenges they have, what they want to achieve. So their objectives. You know, challenges, issues, and needs are important. And then it's providing advice, right? And providing advice and based on acquiring knowledge about the company, getting insight, giving insight, ideas, solutions, and then having the team together in terms of execution. So the products and, and services can really range depending on the client needs. Uh, as I mentioned, it could be merger and acquisition, and that's where really more the investment banker will come in. Okay, uh, it could be transaction needs, uh, whether they have foreign currency uh, requirements, and you know, you know today's market, you know, is very volatile, and sometimes uh, just you know a, a war breakout cause huge you know volatility in the foreign exchange, so that. There's a lot of work uh, required, perhaps on the hedging side, how to reduce the risk. Okay, and if the client wants to raise funds uh, itself, it can be going for the bank or they raise the debt capital, meaning like issuing bonds itself, uh, so that uh, you know it can be put to retail consumer to, to invest, or it can be corporate or uh, institutional uh, investors. Okay, so. Really understanding the client is very important of what corporate banking does. So next slide. What is a day like in the life of a corporate banker? Uh, so as mentioned, understanding the client is the most important thing. Being connecting with the client, and um, there must be a confidence and trust built with the client over time. In other words, it is very important to deliver on the promise. 
Okay, you cannot say that, oh, you can do this, but then you can't. So, you know, being very frank and honest with our clients is absolutely very important. And uh, so one of the reasons I stay so long with this bank is because we fi I find that this bank is a very responsible <laughs> bank. So, you know, we do deliver on our promise. Okay. So engaging the client is important. Okay. First of all, um, every bank has their own target market. Okay. So like my bank, we focus on the really the top, you know, 1,000, the biggest names in the world. So, so then that becomes our target market. We assess, you know, and try to, uh, first of all, speak to the client, prospect the client, to ask them to use it. So for such clients, every bank wants their business. So because of that, uh, for us, that means we need a lot more skills in terms of ensuring we can add value. So we have to show that we can add value and deliver a promise and our services to do. And our product, yeah, is it, something that can fit their business, okay? And the key thing about as a corporate banker is bring in the various specialists that we need because we are actually a generalist. There are so many products in a bank. We need to know enough so that by understanding the client needs, we know, okay, based on this client needs, we should be engaging, you know, who and who in the bank who are specialists in this field, okay? That we need to talk to. And together, we can structure something for the client. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's say a, a client who used, say, uh, have presence in 12 countries in Asia, okay? And we talk to the regional decision maker based in Singapore. You may know that Singapore happens to be a regional hub for many multinationals. So they actually control and manage from Singapore a lot of countries in terms of finance, okay? Even though they have local finance people, but these people may actually report to someone in Singapore. So we would like to talk to the person in Singapore and we don't just talk about Singapore, we talk about, say, India, China, you know, Southeast Asia. And let's say they, they say that, oh, okay, in Asia, in this 12 countries, you know, three of these countries are always borrowing money, they need money, but, you know, six of the other countries are always in surplus cash, all right? So, you know, if you put your funds into deposit in the bank, the interest rate is really quite small. But when you borrow, you need a bigger, you know, much higher interest rate. But we can help them structure some form of automation so that, you know, they can both, you know, lend to each other through a bank structure and minimize in terms of the loan expenses and increase, you know, their interest on surpluses. That, for example. And that would be more a cash management type of product, okay? And so what we do is to work with our cash management team based on the type of profile, challenges, objectives that they have. And then we look at the regulation of each country because the regulations, that's, that's the beauty about Asia, is very, very different country by country. So based on all these, then we can structure a solution for them, okay? And that's where the specialists will come in, which is another department of it. But as a corporate banker, we need to know enough in order to do the very early, you know, messaging with the client so that it make it interesting enough for the client to engage us in the deeper level. Okay. So that's where, you know, we bring in our, you know, internal partners and we may go and pitch to the client together. And sometimes the client may have, because there are so many banks, because uh, as the, the clients we have are very, very big ones, uh, which you often may uh, see in the news. And they say, okay, I do actually have five uh, banks that are uh, our panel banks, meaning that they have lent me money before. So let me, let's give a chance to all five banks. And we issue what they call a request for proposal. And to all the five banks, then each of the bank, you know, within, they give us a time deadline. We come back with what the solution. So it's almost a beauty for it. We had to really pitch for the business to try to win. 
effects, okay? So, and you can tell, so which means as a corporate banker, really need to like people, to deal with people, because it is a people business. I have to deal with the client, which is the external party, and with the client itself, there may be many stakeholders within the client. All right, we have really the the, the managing directors or the, the CFO, uh, the, the finance side, the treasury side, and it could be other areas that procurement as well. Okay, but at the stakeholders internal within the bank, I have to deal with you know say the credit side with uh, say Alvin, right? Uh, is if we want to land this, can we land this money based on the profile of the client? Okay, and we uh, and also various product partners, whether it's foreign exchange, whether it's transaction banking, cash management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And at the same time, we I also have to ensure that whatever we sell will be delivered, which means the back office, the supporting function, I we have to communicate to our partners what exactly the client needs to ensure they deliver it right. So which means that, you know, it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's really about you know, talking to different clients, understanding different business, and what can we do to ensure we add value to the business so that we can do the business well and the company can fly. So, so that's why, you know, we have pitch and we hope for mandate and then you implement the close. So that's what really allies a corporate banker. So it also means that, you know, we go and see our clients in their offices or we go for lunches together uh, or coffee together. And that's all the way that we build uh, in terms of knowledge of clients and the client builds in terms of trust with us. Okay? Over to that. Thanks, Chris. So, um, hi, everyone. I think. Chris did give a good overview of day in the life of a corporate banker, right? And before I kind of start off uh, giving a flavor about the roles of a corporate banking junior or an analyst, please, I think I did want to call out something that Chris mentioned, which is how different banks cover kind of different spectrum of clients, right? So if you're looking at uh, maybe bank A, who covers uh, small, medium enterprises, uh, middle market clients and also large corporates versus another bank who only focuses on the large corporates, Fortune 500, Fortune 1000, from a junior corporate banker perspective. I think the, the stage of your career at which you will independently cover the clients on your own will also differ just because of the complexity of the clients. So if you're looking at clients being small, medium enterprises, maybe they, their demands or their needs are simpler. So possibly in your senior analyst years or junior associate years, and that would be about three to four years into your career, you would be able to hold your own client portfolio. But from a bank um, similar to ours, where we only cover the large corporate clients, they are so complex your client contacts are very, very senior people, like your regional CFO or regional treasurers. From that perspective, you don't really get to independently have a client portfolio that early on in your career. I think, and this is probably an estimate, an average of uh, maybe six, seven, eight years when you turn senior associate or even into the VP vice president years before you actually get to independently cover your clients. So I did want to call that out to kind of uh, compare between banks because not all banks are the same just because of the different client segments that we cover. So um, this slide is really more from a junior perspective, like a corporate banking analyst, right? When one is starting off their career in banking. So as with all jobs, when you start out, I think it's very key to really build a very strong and solid foundation. So certain roles that I did want to call out here, um, for example, number four, you do comprehensive and in-depth company and industry research. As Pris mentioned earlier, um, knowing your client inside out is the most important aspect of being a corporate banker. You have to know what industry your client is in. You have to know how your client is structured. You have to keep up to date that your client just acquired another company. Your client, is your client doing well financially? You need to be aware 
of what your client does in order to know your client's needs and to potentially see what kind of banking solutions are appropriate uh, for their structure. So I think from an analyst point of view, there's a lot of work uh, done in doing company and industry research just because the senior bankers are often very, very busy out and about meeting clients, out and about solving client situations that uh, from an analyst perspective, a junior perspective, it's very important to keep up to date with companies, news and research. So that's something that um, as a junior within the corporate banking space, we do a lot of. And then consequently, when you join um, senior bankers in their client meetings or client pitches, number five comes very important, which is preparing of presentations. We do a lot of presentation decks just because we want to uh, have a very targeted, customized deck to each client. So all clients are different different industry, uh, different nature of business, and all clients are structured differently internally as well. So the type of solutions that is uh, aligned that or, or meets a specific client's need are all very different. So we do spend a lot of time uh, customizing presentations uh, to bring along to the client meeting so we have effective uh, conversations with them. And then um, the last point on this slide that I did want to call out, which is very important, is on number seven. It's pretty lengthy, but essentially it's really uh, teamwork and communication with all your different stakeholders. So from a relationship management, corporate banking point of view, your stakeholders are many. You have external stakeholders like your clients. Um, I think the previous slide did have a whole host of product partners. We work a lot with internal legal, we work with credit where Alvin is in, we work with um, tax compliance on, on many, many different issues. So I think um, being able to effectively work and push agendas through with different uh, team members within the bank is actually very important and very something that we do on a day-to-day -day basis as a junior trying to make sure client issues get resolved or deals and transactions actually get executed smoothly. Yep, so this is really just a snapshot of what a junior in a corporate banking space does. So you have a flavor of it. Then if I move on to the next slide, which is how do you know if you are suited? So you would see a lot of terms being used here. And I think there's a lot of overlap within um, with the slide that um, Alvin was actually showing earlier. And I don't deny that actually all of these traits and, and personalities are important in, I would say, most, if not all jobs. So communication, teamwork driven. But what I really wanted to call out here was what, was, what are the traits and personalities are, that are exceptionally important in a corporate banking role. And as you can probably guess by now, in number one, I would say it's really the first one, which is communicator. So you have to possess effective verbal and written communication. And frankly, our job entails a lot of talking. We are like basically talking all the time. If you come down to the corporate banking floor, all the team members are either on the phone, they're either discussing uh, an issue, uh, it's basically not a quiet office, I would say. You're talking to clients all the time. You're pushing agendas through internally by speaking with various um, different operations people, product partners. So I would say you have to be comfortable um, uh, communicating with a lot of different stakeholders on a day-to-day -day basis um, because this role definitely entails a lot of that. And a second trait, which I think is actually very important, is on teamwork. So um, as Pris mentioned, right, corporate, bank corporate bankers are really like the face of the bank to the client and also the face of the client to the bank. So basically any issues that your client has, the corporate banker is really the one that they will escalate and, and look to to resolve their issues. So as with, I guess, if all of you are in school, you have project works, which involves teamwork as well. Um, you, when you come to a banking space, right, you, you have to apply a lot of teamwork as well. So you work with different partners. You have to make it work for the client, even if you, you disagree with the, with the partner. You don't like this partner that you're working with. Ultimately, you are accountable to the client as a banker. 
you are responsible to make sure that the client's queries and the client's issues are resolved. So to that effect, I think you do have to make it work internally uh, just to get all these issues resolved uh, and, and be accountable to the client. So that's one that I would think is very important as well. And the third one, uh, how do you know if you are suited? It's not really a suitability, but I would say that a corporate banker's role, it's really not a desk bound job. So if you are one that is looking, you're not the kind that can sit through, sit facing a laptop from nine to five every day, uh, looking at your Excel sheets and basically not talking to anyone, um, and you enjoy one that you are constantly meeting people, you are not at your desk, you're constantly in discussions, then maybe this is an, uh, a role that could be suitable for you because we are always out and about. I think a majority of our time are not spent in the office, especially for the senior bankers who are always out and about meeting people. So if that is something that you are steering towards too, I think it, uh, corporate banking might be a, a suitable kind of uh, job that you could look at. Yeah. So um, here we have a sharing session. So um, for my introduction, right, I did want to kind of share with you my journey as a corporate banker, just because this career is really all that I've ever known, right? I did my um, internship uh, with this bank in 2014, where Chris uh, was also a mentor to me back then. Um, I think I was in my third year of my SMU uh, undergraduate degree, where um, how did I chance upon banking as a career? It was honestly by chance, um, just because I have two older brothers, and my brothers were both in the banking field, not in corporate banking per se, but they were both investment bankers. So then, uh, my elder brother got uh, uh, got a change in role from investment banking to corporate banking. So when I was looking up for an internship, um, intuitively, of course, my brothers were in banking. So I was like, hey, what's banking about? Can you give me a bit more flavor? Then they gave me um, a bit of perspectives on banking. And then I came across this role of a corporate banker, which my brother uh, got changed into, right? And I was like, hey, maybe this is something that could be uh, of interest because um, I like to talk. Uh, I don't want a, a job that is desk bound. I, I enjoy being out and about. I can't really uh, focus my attention for many hours at a computer. So I was like, hey, why not? And I was looking through the portals. Back then, I think university, you guys have portals uh, for job applica uh, internship applications and just uh, landed myself this internship role. And um, the internship was 10 weeks. I think it was a great exposure during the internship. Uh, if you think of an internship, many a times we go in into an internship stint thinking that it is the employers that are assessing us. So we try and try our best to be the, that perfect intern just so that they can give us an, a conversion. But I think I would, I would probably encourage you guys to uh, look at an internship more as an experience just to see if you are suited for that role. Just because your career journey is, doesn't just spend that first few years of your, of your uh, starting of your career, right? It's, it's tens and tens of years. So you do have to look out for what you are interested in. Because I must say, if you are in a job where you are not interested in, you, it probably will be quite miserable to be spending every day in that role. So um, after my internship um, experience, I uh, got to go out on client meetings, got to speak to the full-timers on what the job entails. I did enjoy my 10 weeks with the bank and at the end of the internship there was a presentation and of course after that I did express interest to return as a full-time analyst if there was a vacancy and fortunately for me uh, there was a vacancy and the bank did extend an offer. So I did return um, in 2015 so that's when I started off my full-time analyst um, years, which was three years for me, the analyst years. So I think as an analyst, the difference is that, I mean, you, you just started off um, fresh, right? You don't know anything. You, came, you come into the bank and it's really, really a very steep learning curve. Um, as, a, as starting off your career, I think that period of time was really just asking a lot of questions. You don't know everything, but you just ask, 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 and you just find out the answers to it. 
And I think the first three years, it's really, again, reiterating the point of building a very solid and strong foundation um, before you move on into the, in, into the associate years and the VP years. So then after three years of analyst, um, I became an associate. And I think an associate, the expectation is that you already know the bank. You already know how things work. They, the bankers do not handhold you to execute a deal. They expect you to know exactly what to do. And the expectation of an associate within a corporate banking team, I think that is different from an analyst, is that they expect definitely one for you to run the deals and transactions smoothly, but also maybe to start value adding in terms of doing a client meeting to ask good questions or to start um, giving a value add of, oh, I think this solution might be a good fit um, to this particular client that you're working on. So from that perspective, there is a little bit of distinction between an associate and an analyst um, in a corporate banking space just because of the seniority and experience um, in there. So then in this, at the start of this year, um, I assumed the role of a vice president within um, the corporate banking team. And honestly, I think this is a, for me, it's a very huge change because you are no longer a support to a senior banker as you were as an analyst and associate. You have, a, for me, I have a full portfolio. Uh, I mostly no longer support the senior bankers on their name. It gets a bit scary and then the learning curve gets a bit steeper because you are 100% responsible for the client. You are a full-fledged banker now. And um, to today, I feel like I'm still learning a lot and trying to, trying to really step into that role of being a corporate banker. So I would say over the last um, seven years, right, the, the growth has been great. And, and through this seven years experience, there are, I think, three pointers that I really wanted to share and call out on. So one is really the internship. And I understand from juniors that join us uh, newly now that um, people tend to do numerous internships nowadays. And for banking specifically, I feel that in your last year of your polytechnic or university, before you graduate and go into the working world, I feel like that internship is actually very important because through just through the experience of what we've seen in the banking sector, a lot of the full-time analysts, they typically come from the internship pool. And there is honestly quite a few that come uh, there's honestly a few that come from the outside lateral hires. So I would say, think, give a good think about what potential career you envision yourself to be in and then try an internship in that. And hopefully if that interests you and you get a converted uh, full-time offer and then you land yourself a career. I feel like that, that last internship before your graduation is actually very important. And then the second thing I wanted to call out here is that I feel like a corporate banker role has very good uh, trajectory. So you come in as an analyst and definitely you're not going to start uh, covering accounts independently or managing clients independently. So to me, there, as a junior, there is always that goal and aspiration at the end of the day to really become an independent corporate banker. So as you work through your first few years trying to figure out everything and build a foundation, a good foundation, I feel like that goal there really pushes you to, to learn everything and, and become a, a full-fledged banker at the end of the day. So that is quite a fulfilling experience, I feel. And then the third uh, thing that I wanted to call out, and probably the last thing before I end off my segment here, is that as a corporate banker, you work with a lot of different partners and stakeholders within a bank. And honestly, you come in as a corporate banking analyst, you might at the end of the day find out that corporate banking isn't really the place for you. But because you work with so many different partners and stakeholders within the bank, you get a sense of what kind of roles there are available in the bank. So for example, uh, if you are a corporate banking analyst and you work with say Alvin and the credit team, you realize that hey, maybe um, the credit risk management job might be more suited for me and, and you can look to change into a role similar to that. Or if you're interested in foreign exchange or you're interested in investment banking, they, as a corporate banker, it, it gives you snippets into what the roles of your partners uh, are and what it entails. 
And I guess it gives you a good perspective for what roles there are within a bank that you could potentially be in if power banking isn't for you.